Hello and welcome back. Um, I've been working on a painting now for several weeks um, in between doing my airbrush, well learning my airbrush actually and doing a little bit of filming as well so it's been quite hectic plus I've got other projects on so what I was thinking of doing was showing you that um, the last part of the painting I put the, the clouds in place the mountains, a couple of tr distant trees and a bit of mist and that type of thing so I thought it was a good idea if I actually um, show you how I'm even going to do the foreground and maybe a bit of the middle ground as well I put some grass in place so it would be a good idea if I actually showed you um, a photograph of what I've done so far. So if you want to look by here, I'll, I'll bring this up for you. And as you can see, we've done the mountains, I've done some clouds. These, these are the, um, the, 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 the distant trees then. And you notice how small they are compared to the middle ground trees. And again, I'm going to build these trees up. Also, I've got a bit of a gully, um, as you can see, in the port, in the middle ground, which I'm going to finish off. Now, I've used a number of different techniques in this painting, from um, obviously brush acrylics, um, and I and I, I, I put the mist I put in, I put with a very very fine um, glaze. Well, not so much a glaze; it's more of a wash, which is a very thin down paint. So I, I, I'm going to take you through these uh, techniques but I'm going to start now with the middle ground move on to the foreground and I'll go through the brushes and, 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 and I'll show you how I'm going to thicken the paint up etc so um, yeah if you would like to follow me now Diesel, then we will start the painting there we go I put a bit of a glaze on it. Um, I've got a couple of paint marks. So you've got to be very careful when you're storing your, your artwork, especially if you're halfway through it. Um, it. I've left this down by the side of my easel and it's got a bit of paint on it, so I'm going to have to try and correct that. Um, well, let's have a look at the, um, the middle ground now. I'll um, go through the colours I'm going to use. And um, I'm not going to tell you what brushes I'm going to use because I'm basically going to be selecting them as I need them. So it's a bit stupid for me to give you an array of brushes because I, I don't work like that. And a lot of artists don't. They'll just pick up a brush they think they're going to use. So what I'll do now, I'll, I'll show you how I've arranged my colours on the palette. And then um, we'll go from there. So the, the camera will be close in and I'll narrate it as I go along. Okay, it's been, uh, as I said... I've been on and off with this acrylic, so I, I, I cleaned my palette off and um, I've got to clean my little jar. This is what I use my, for my mixing mediums. Okay, so looking at the, the landscape that I'm doing, it uh, needs greens. So, here is my fantastic array of colours. Um, I'm going for a, a card yellow, which is a medium hue. I'm going to put that... Um, that's a new one. I am opening this one, look. I always like fresh paint, it's lovely. And if you're anything like me, paint a, a bit of a paint open, but there we are. Okay, I'll put my yellow for there. I don't put a lot on because we can always add to the palette, but it's a bit difficult trying to keep the paint and taking it off the palette. Um, I'm going to put next to my yellow some red. Oh. There we go. And because my sky is got Ceylon blue in it. Um, I could use that, but what I think I'm going to do, uh, I got some here if I can find it. 
Yeah, there's a bit of Prussian blue there, which is quite a nice dark, nice dark blue. And that's got a bit of black in it. And a bit of ultramarine um, uh, and carbon black, basically. So we know there's a, an ultramarine blue in there. So there's our red, the other one blue, which is our primary colours. Um, if we are mixing colours from that, obviously this blue is going to be a little bit darker because it's got black in it. But the reason I picked that colour is because I want to mix a green. And you might think, oh, yellow and blue will make green. But what I what I like is I put down here my black and then I put a bit of titanium white there so that's my greys I can make greys from that I've also got a bit of zinc white which I can mix with my titanium white just to make it a little bit more opaque and to, 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 get, to get the green going, I put a little bit of yellow and a touch of, I mean a touch of black. And I can get a nice dark green. And then obviously the more yellow I add to that, the greener that's going to get and the sharper it's going to get. And if I want to change its value, then I can add some white to brighten the green up. So I haven't used any yellow and blue. All I've done is use a green and a black. And that's the types of greens I like for my landscapes. So um, the other thing I'm going to be using is some um, heavy structure gel. Um, and that's basically used for making my paint really thick. So I can mix that in with that. And as you can see, it, it makes it really thick, so I can I can use my palette knife to get some lovely textures. So when you hear me saying I'm going to thicken up my paint, that's what I'm going to be using. And um, I'll explain to you how I mix in my colours, and um, I can't say what proportions, but getting the um, the colours right. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll put the camera down onto the onto the uh, palette and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing but that's all I need to say for the moment so I got my red, my yellow, my blue I got my two whites and I got a, a, a nice Mars black and as I decide I might use some pre-mixed colours but primarily I, I mix from the main primaries so I normally mix all my paints by hand but there are uh, on occasions when I decide to, to use the premix paint. So, without further ado, we'll get the um, canvas. Right, there's a little spot there where I've got to try and correct. As you can see, uh, my clouds are. I'm quite happy with those. Um, I've misted in the background there. I've obviously, there's a little bit of mist between the mountain and the, the trees. I put a couple of little trees here, which are in the middle ground. So I need to put a little bit of more mist. But what I'm going to do is just work on the grass. And I'm using a, a fan brush. And I'm just tapping in the paint. And taking a little bit of excess off. And I'm going to tap on the grass. Not covering up. the whole, uh, uh, whole area and just putting a little bit in where I think it's gonna look right it's all a judgment and I'm varying the colour from the lightest to the darkest just to give it a little bit of texture don't worry about the way I'm holding the brush um, I'm doing this Basically, because I'm trying to, I'm painting on an angle, and uh, it's quite difficult to to 
not to get my head in shot actually. So I want to darken that up slightly. So I'm just going to touch that with a bit more black. And just get a little bit of shadow colour going in. What I want to do now, I want to bring in another uh, tree roughly there, maybe. And um, well, I'm going to use this. So again, into a nice dark mix. And just add a little bit more black to the green and yellow mix that we made earlier. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a tree in here. Just touch in to make that a bit darker. I'm just using the very edge of the fan brush and just tapping that in there. First of all, I'm going to use the edge, the tip of my brush, and starting on the top, I'm just tapping it in, and as I come down. I'm just going to twist the brush slightly and open out the bottom of the tree and then flick up a little bit. It's not an exact science but I'll be thickening this up in just a second. I'm going to put, I've got a nice round tree there so I think I'll put a, another type of tree again. I'm just using the tip of the brush thinking about the shape and form just bring that down like that I'm getting my mister bottle now because this, this bottle is a very fine mist I'm just spraying my palette stop it from drying on me. Again, I'm going to thicken up my paint now with a bit of my heavy structure gel. nice and thick now and I'm I've loaded the brush up tapped it up there's quite there's quite a lot of paint on that so I'm gonna bring in a tree shape again just keeping the same fan brush and I want to try and get a bit of sky to come through so I'm mindful of that. Picking up a bit more paint now. Just putting some basic shapes in. Mixing a bit more black with the paint. Yellow, just to give it a tint of green, and then I'm just going to find another fir tree here. I just want to see its branches coming through without trying to destroy the back tree. We can re-establish that one in just a second. In fact, I think I'll bring that one forward a second. And again, 
on the upper tree there. Different type of tree this time. And maybe put another one over there. That one's gone now, so I really want to see that one. So. Sometimes when you're doing these type of paintings, it, it just it makes it. I I've got no set plan. I'm not following any particular photograph or reference. This is just all out of my mind. So you can see already we've developed that uh, like viewpoint then. Um, and which is focus, uh, focusing on the mountain. So um, we need to decide what we're going to do here, how we're going to sort that gully out. And I need to let that dry. I can't put the uh, hair dry on it tonight because it's a bit late. So um, I'll just let that dry off. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is I'm still using the hand brush and I've gone into a, 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 a medium tone uh, green I would say I've mixed. Now bearing in mind acrylic paint does dry dark so this is looking quite dramatic at the moment because it uh, looks quite bright but it, it will die back. It's, it's good to bear in mind that acrylic paint does dry darker. So as you can see I'm just using the tip of the brush, which is a fan brush, I'm just using the bristles to act like little tiny blades of grass, but I'm leaving pockets of dark in between to act as um, pockets of shadow. So I'm not covering the old surface of the, the canvas up, I'm leaving negative space in place. Continuous build up of colour, a little bit lighter here, a little bit lighter there. And it's just basically using my imagination and um, just trying to highlight the grass where I think it will be high, uh, highlighted. It's building up, it's not flat, it's um, some divots and little hills and the grass isn't always perfectly flat, especially on a landscape like this. This is a quite a rough and ready landscape, except in the mountains somewhere, in my mind. So all I'm doing there was putting some grass in place with a little rabbit stick there. Working on the um, right down side of the bank in now. Again, a little lighter mix, not as um, dark as the left hand side. Because this is a little bit more in the light and I've decided I'm going to put a path in or a walkway where I think um, somebody might have trekked up the mountain or animals are using it for some reason perhaps there's a little spring in the corner there somewhere and the animals like to come and drink um, just putting a bit of grass around the trees now Like I said, don't forget that the acrylic paint does dry dark. So as this dries, you can see it's starting to, to go back into the underlining colour. Put a few blades of grass and a tiny grassy, bushy type of things behind the trees because there's always little bits here and little bits there. It's just a matter of just using your imagination. Right? 
I'm just thinking where these things could be. I decided now to just put a little bush in maybe. It's a bit more pleasing to the eye. So I'm just using the edge of the brush that I did when I did the four fir trees. And um, don't forget that my paint is really thick so I'm allowing it to dry slightly on the palette so it does get a bit tacky because I want to pull it off. I want that sticky tacky type of effect. So using the paint I've got on my brush now I'm just tapping in a couple of the highlight areas and this can be played with later on. We've um, used the uh, wash technique as I showed you in previous episodes where I can darken the grass up and put some shadows in with some Payne's Grey or some shadow mix. And again I'm adding a couple of trees and some bushes just to build it up a little bit just to make it more pleasing to the eye and try and give some dimension. Just showing you the brush then. Showing you that I'm using the edge of the brush. Now the tip, the very tip of the brush, I'm using just a flick. I use a brush in different ways because um, as you can see I've I'm still using the fan brush so it's important that you get to know these brushes and what they can do and uh, the effects they can give you so when you come to do a painting then I don't think about what I'm going to do I just got the idea in my mind of what I would want to see and I'm not thinking about the brush or the paint um, just tones and values and I know what the brushes can do as far as effects are concerned So just highlight the bushes a little bit in the mid-ground just to make it look a bit brighter because I've in my mind's eye I've got the, um, the, the sun zinging through there and I'm just playing around with a brush to try and get the effect that I want and sometimes you can overwork so you've got to know when to stop and um, at this point I feel as as if I might have overworked this section slightly so I let it dry in or get the hairdryer out on it and um, I can get back to it later on so if you do make a mistake or you're not happy with something dry it off or let it dry naturally and then you can get back and rework it I'm just going to speed this up slightly now So just using my small round brush, um, more of a detailed brush than anything, I'm just putting a bit of shadow in and a bit of highlight onto my um, gully way. Many years ago it was most probably a bit of an earthquake here and the ground opened up. And I just wanted to show you that you could, you know, it does. the landscape doesn't have to be flat, you can make these interesting things like divots and galleyways and sinkholes and all that type of thing. You've got to let your mind run away with you. At this point now I've got my half rigger or script liner brush and I've thinned the paint down like ink and um, I've just decided I'm going to put a little tree here. Uh, it hasn't got no leaves on it. Well, perhaps it's a late bloomer this year. So I'm just building that up now. It's only a little feature just to break it up slightly, you know, because you've got branches and twigs and all these little things are sticking out the grass, out the hedges, you know, deer's running run through and 
broken off a couple of branches etc so y and a v I'm going up make a y and then make a v I'll just speed this process up a bit more now for you just putting a bit of shadow in behind the trees um, on the trunks I've added some more branches so just building things up very quickly well very quickly because I have speeded it up but in uh, as you can see but I am putting just twigs and branches and little bits and pieces that I think need it okay we're gonna put a silver birch effect in I'm using the script liner on the side and um, I put a bit of white bark effect on I'm just drying that off very quickly with a hairdryer just to speed the process up I am painting this at an angle so it is quite hard um, as you can see the way I'm using the brush it's not necessarily the way I would use the brush if I wasn't filming but it's just the way I got the camera set up and I need to get these effects in so I'm just putting a bit of black over the white now I'm putting a bit of shadow on the back of the tree and again drying that off with the hairdryer Now you might see me using the um, hairdryer and the brush at the same time but that's basically just for, to help me speed things up. I put the path in, just drop in some shadows in with a very thin wash of black or Payne's grey, depends what you've got to hand really. As I said it is a very thin wash. I've established the, the path now so I'm using the my grass effect brush which is the one that's got two different lengths of hair on it it's called a rake brush if you're interested in purchasing one and um, I'm using the medium mix and I'm just going over the foreground as you can see it's quite light but this will dry back and just leave a nice effect as I said earlier you know you've got to remember that um, acrylic paint dries darker so you can always paint a shade or two or a value or two lighter and it will die back and to prove the point I will show you in just a second when I hair dryer this and you'll see it just dis disappear there you go it's just disappeared but the effect is still there it's very very subtle but the effect is still there and again slightly lighter mix building there the effect I want up. Um, unfortunately the camera doesn't pick up on detail very well and um, I'm not using HD in this moment but uh, trust me the effect is there. Just deciding now I'll put another bush in. So I've got a little bit of brown, a little bit of black and just touching my different tones of green and the surface of the canvas is quite hot now because I'm using the air dryer on it so it is getting tacky and starting to pull off a little bit but that's the effect I wanted so be careful when you're using a hair dryer and brush in this manner because it, your brush will dry rapidly so you, you've got to be reasonably experienced to be able to use a brush and hair dryer in this manner but um, I'm just putting in couple of leaves on the tree now just to just give it the effect and balance the left and right of the side of the canvas out so using a large round hat uh, no it's a fitch brush actually no it's not it's a filbert using a large filbert brush um, I've decided to just drop in a few leaves and just put in the shadows of the leaves in place and then building up the mid-tone and light I don't normally paint this feet, I wish I could, sometimes I could uh, self-portrait. Right, I'm deciding now to put a, more bushes in. 
And I think at this point I decided that I might have made a mistake and made the, the, the green a bit too bright. But it's not a problem. You, you, could, you can adjust that. you just got to let it dry and be patient. And unfortunately for me, I'm not that patient. But um, there you are. Decided now to put the air dryer on it and see what I can do with it. So I just mixed up a light green mix with a bit of black in it. And I've just washed over the, the bright area, which will lock it back. Again, I will look at the paint effects tutorial. I'm just playing around with that area now. And the reason I'm using the air dryer and it not is not just to force it back and, and get it um, dry. I'm putting a bit of more mist in the between the mountains and the alleyway. And going back, I just decided to um, drop some flowers in. But you can dry the painting off really easy with the air dryer. But if you have put something on a bit bright and you don't know if it's going to fade back in, that's a good way of checking very rapidly. So what I've decided to do now is drop flowers in. Put a yellow, a couple of bits of yellow. It's always important to put a little bit of red in somewhere. Um, it does actually lift it and uh, it makes the eye focus. Bit more grass. I know my battery dropped um, when I was filming this, so I'm not too sure exactly where I stopped filming, but um, I'm going to continue putting in some flowers. Oh, here we are. The battery's about to drop now. And here's the finished product. As you can see, I put some grasses in um, to the bottom of the right-hand tree. Uh, it's just where the sun is catching it a bit more. I've done bluebells in the foreground. I put a little path in, um, and I just emphasised a bit of flowers and twigs and branches, and and really tried to give the um, the look of depth to the painting. Um, and that's how you do trees and grasses and bushes. Play around, experiment. It's the most important thing. And um, looking at the, um, we we'll look, we'll have another look at maybe doing a mountain and some sky and um, and that's the finished painting so I'll go back and record the closing part and um, I'll see you then and there we are all nice I've got a couple of birds actually in there I meant to mention that just earlier um, but it's quite a nice balance painting as I said I'm not a landscape artist but I'm quite happy with that um, so please leave any comments in the comment box below and please subscribe and practice 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 just to let you know that I finished my first airbrush project for my, my grandson um, this is a cover of a PlayStation 3 so I've done a, a Call of Duty graphic on there and it's all been lacquered and everything I haven't videoed that particular one, but um, as I said, I am practicing with the airbrush, so check them out if you're interested in having, look, having a go at airbrushing. But as far as acrylics are concerned, um, I've got a few projects on, but I've got a, a show do now um, in a week, so I'm looking forward to getting my artwork sold on that one. Um, I'm, I'm normally pretty good. So, the practice, practice, practice. Just keep using the brushes, see what the effects they do, and you settle on the ones that are the best for you. You don't need a vast variety of brushes. And um, maybe I'll have a look at the clouds and the mountains again. I'm, I'm thinking about doing a cloud tutorial, so that's going to be uh, a quite a good one for me as well as you. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.